First of all, we should know what powers we have got. And also we should know how we are going to preserve those powers and what more powers we can very, very easily achieve. <laughs> the first power that you get after realization is the greatest power on earth. This is the power of Sri Ganesha. It is only He can do this job that you people are doing today. And that power is of raising the Kundalini. No one so far in the history of spirituality has ever raised the Kundalini in such a short time as you people are doing. It moves under your fingers. It is absolutely Sri Ganesha's power which is given to you. <coughs> At the time when you are giving the realization, even if you are caught up in any one of your chakras or you have any problem, even if you are a little bit possessed, even if you are not such a good Sahaja Yogi, even if you are not that much surrendered to Mataji, even if you don't have much sense of obligation <coughs> about Sahaja Yoga, still the Kundalini rises under your fingers. <coughs> This Ganesh Shakti is given to you by Sri Ganesh Himself within you to give you the confidence, to give you the confidence that you can raise the Kundalini, but not the feeling that you are raising the Kundalini. If you go on without surrendering yourself to Sahaja Yoga, after some time you will lose this power very fast. The another power <coughs> which you have got at the raising of the Kundalini of anyone, you can notice it that when the Kundalini rises, that time there will be no obstruction of any kind. Whatever may be the obstructions around, say there is a possessed person next door, he would not disturb you at that time. In your family there may be a person who is a negative person, but if you are raising the Kundalini, at that moment he will be kept quiet. At the time when you are moving your hand on the Kundalini is the greatest power you are using. I don't know how much Radha you have about yourself and about the power that you have. At that time there will be no obstruction on your hand by anyone whatsoever. Even by mistake nobody will hold your hand or touch your hand. The second power you have got when you are raising the Kundalini, that <coughs> at that time when you will be raising your Kundalini, you will be completely attracting the attention of the another person with it.
like a magnet by which you should understand that you can raise your kundalini wherever you feel it when you are raising the kundalini supposing there is lot of noise going on there are all kinds of problems going on supposing you are going in the train there is a noise of the train or any such thing happening <coughs> that time your attention will not be distracted but the attention of the person who is taking the realization from you will not be attracted by outside things at that time when you are raising the kundalini or that means that you can give realization at any time because at that time you reside in the lotus which is closed the other <coughs> power you have got at the time of kundalini jagruti that no baser feelings will rise within you even if you are a possessed person at the time of kundalini jagruti you will not have baser feelings impure feelings about the person whom you are giving realization maybe before and after but not during when you are giving realization these dirty feelings will not come to you automatically you don't have to stop your mind automatically it will work out. you will be absolutely satisfied even if you are hungry you will not feel the hunger or any physical need at the time when you are giving realization there will be no distraction of any kind you won't do anything that is indignified at the time when you will be raising your hand because you are being blessed with dignity <coughs> at the time you are raising the kundalini you will never joke or you will never make fun you will not be frivolous automatically you try it won't work these are <coughs> you are supporting powers all these five powers have described are very few of the thousand others but these are the five powers of shri ganesh now these powers can be maintained if you try to follow shri ganesh his foremost quality is that he does not know any other god or anybody else higher than his own mother a complete dedication and complete obedience to mother i mean sort of he is made out of that obedience complete love and affection for the mother he doesn't argue he doesn't question he doesn't do anything and that's how these powers are in him the maximum if you think by arguing with me you are gaining your sad limitation you have to keep me pleased even ganesha tries every minute to keep me pleased is a fact so please don't try to displease me i may not say anything because outwardly i don't say it but your powers will be reduced <coughs> the ganesha fifth power is the power of wisdom and that whatever 
he knows he can draw it and write it down. <coughs> Even that power you have got. When you are rising the Kundalini, you talk to the person in such a manner that a person becomes <coughs> wise. And you also talk to him only that which is wisdom. And also you write or show him figures automatically which are right. Even if you don't remember your figures, they'll come out right. <coughs> now the three powers of Adi Shakti work in you. One gives you longevity, and clear-cut idea about your desires. If your desires are right, all your desires are fulfilled by this power, all your desires, all. But the first one one should know, that your desire should be right. For example, now Sahaja Yogis want their ashram. Why do they want ashram for? How many are willing to stay in the ashram? How many are going to take their children in the ashram? How many are going to give their exclusive homes and their, take their wives and, or take their husbands who are not Sahaja Yogi in the ashram? And how many of them are wanting only ashram just because they'll have some place to live in a cheap manner? What is the purpose of getting ashram? Are you sure about it? Have we been able to find out why do you want an ashram? If your desires are clear-cut, then they will be fulfilled. Absolutely hundred <coughs> percent. That power you can achieve only by putting your bandhan on your heart. Whatever desire you have, you say it and put it on your heart. Means you are asking from your heart. Seven times you just give it a bandhan and the work will be done. But don't use it for nonsensical things. Because if you use it for nonsensical things, this power will go away. Use for something special of a higher level. Now, by your second power, you will automatically meet people who are learned and who are Sahaja. You will also read books which are Sahaja. Even if you have to read some other books, you will be able to know that this is not correct and this is correct. And by that you will be enriching your mind. When you will start speaking, people would be amazed. Those who have never spoken would be speaking very well. Those who have never known poetry will be writing poetry. Lots of things will happen on the field of art also. Those who did not know art will do marvelously in art. But by the first power, which is the Adi Shakti's power or Mahakali's power, you <coughs> get the love of all the people around. Everybody will feel magnetically attracted towards you. And you will be always guided by great souls and angels. If you come across anybody 
I was meeting an accident, you will stop that mind from going that way. If you are in an accident, everybody will be saved. You will seldom have an accident. If you have it, you won't be hurt much. Amazing! All these powers come to you because you are the children of Adi Shakti. The whole universe of the subtle divine power is looking after you individually. You are all marked. The mark is on you. You are bearing the mark. And they are looking after you. So this power of desiring is the power that protects you in all the way that is possible. It guides you. It looks after you. It gives you peace. And this power gives you tremendous faith in Sahaja Yoga. Ultimately, you become filled with joy of Sahaja Yoga, and you don't like anything else but Sahaja Yoga. To you everything is Sahaja Yoga. But sometimes, you know, we are identified with our ego and we think our ego is Sahaja Yoga. Many a times I have seen. People like it because it is identified with their ego. It should be separated from that and should be brought in our lives, in our day-to-day -day life, when we are meeting each other, when we are talking to each other, that joy. One should see one ripple falling and another rising, another falling, as you see in the sea, becoming one with each other. This power is within you. <coughs> And it is working all the time that you are loved and you are looked after. By the middle power, I have told you, you will give realization to people. You will be able to tell their chakras. You will be able to correct your chakra. This is all by your center power. And by this power only you have a very great power over your will. If you decide that you are going to be like this, you will be. If you want to be a happy person, you will be. The transformation will be at your hand. You can transform yourself without any difficulty. That will work out if you use the central power of Mahalakshmi. Of course, you will get better jobs, better money, prospects, but not too much of it. So much so that you will feel very much satisfied about it, so that your attention is more in the center. All other powers of Mahalakshmi you will achieve later on. The, there are many other powers of Mahalakshmi which you have to achieve. But for that your sushumna has to be cleaned very much. For that you have to develop detachment in life. Unless and until you develop detachment, the deeper, deeper powers of Mahalakshmi do not come up. For example, even in the smaller things like having connection with me, even that one is to be a detached thing. Even to say arti or to do something to come forward, that I have to do it. Even to <coughs> invite me for dinner or this thing, every small thing, that I should do it is also attachment. If it works out, well and good. If it does not work out, well and good. You must say that, Mother, you come. But if I cannot come, there should not be slightest feeling and unhappiness, but should be accepted as a part of that. This detachment has to be developed for your Mahalakshmi power. 
then you go beyond. Your timing will be worked out absolutely correctly. You wouldn't, need, you wouldn't have to see the time. There will be time which will be your own. Whenever you will go, you'll find everything worked out well. So, to preserve this power of time, you must not hurry up too much. You should not be slaves of watches. Just let it go. Do not have any obstinacy about anything. Just doesn't matter. If it is ten o'clock, all right. If not, it's ten fifteen, doesn't matter. Just allow yourself to be drifted with the flow of Sahaja Yoga. If it works out well and good, if it does not work out well and good, just keep it like that. Then only you will be surprised how this Mahalakshmi power improves and the blessings of this power are tremendous. Like that you have thousand and one powers already awakened within you. For example, on Vishuddhi Chakra you have sixteen thousand powers. And all these sixteen powers are awakened in you today, as you are. Sixteen thousand powers are awakened in you, as you are today. But when you speak, you don't understand that when you are speaking, you are a Sahaja Yogi with all these powers you are speaking. When you eat, you don't understand that this tongue belongs to a Sahaja Yogi, you should not hanker after anything. Like if somebody likes tea, he go on taking fifteen cups. That's no good. If he is fond of one sort of a food, he won't take another food. Thinking too much about food all the time, asking for food think, and <coughs> organizing food all the time, that spoils. It should be very badly. Then talking ill about anyone, complaining about anyone to me will spoil your uh, Vishuddhi. If there's some sense, if I ask, then it's all right. But all the time talking ill about each other will spoil your Vishuddhi. If possible, try to talk good about others, always. By telling good about another person, you will help yourself another person. For example, say, one Mr. X comes and tells me something against Mr. Y. I'm just stunned because Mr. Y has come and already told me that Mr. X is a fine man. So I tell Mr. X, how do you say that about Mr. Y? Because he was praising you. So he keeps absolutely in a shocked condition and he doesn't know how to answer. When you judge others, you should know that you are judged by God. If you are judging others, God has judged you all. So in a judgment, whatever marks you give to yourself and to others are not going to be consulted at all. It is His judgment which is going to decide how far you are. Those who are in Sahaja Yoga today, they may be some who think that they are great Sahaja Yogis, big people, but maybe that they are not. And those who do not think that they are any great, they want to increase and improve their Shakti, they may be the people who are occupying very high places. So under these circumstances one should never boast and should not have wrong, false estimation about oneself. That is the way you can preserve your powers, much better of your Vishuddhi. If you start talking ill about others to each other, also I've seen people start discussing me and in a very funny way they do it. I think the best way uh, to deal with the problem is not to speak uh, about me. And if you have to speak, then know that it has to be absolutely positive. Otherwise you are harming yourself and you are harming others. Then you don't blame me for that. So that's how your Vishuddhi Chakra's problems are. 
increasing and they go on increasing, especially when you try to confuse yourself and quarrel with yourself and think that, you see, Sahaja Yoga uh, has gained by your coming. You catch me, should You have gained, not Sahaja Yoga. Sahaja Yoga is proved by itself. It doesn't need your help. If there is truth, then by accepting truth you are enhanced, your position has gone up, not the position of the truth. So this idea from your head must go right away, that you have anyway obliged the Sahaja Yoga or that you have obliged God by coming to Him. This idea must go down. This will definitely make your head again upside down and your Kundalini will be again back to its own position. So to keep up even your Vishuddhi or right is not easy, according to many, but it's the easiest when you keep yourself in a state of witness. And that is possible if you develop the habit after realization that everything that you do or want or face is put into nirvicharita, into thoughtless awareness. If you start that habit, you'll be amazed, your witness state will improve and that you will rise in your being. This is very important to understand that without transformation you have no meaning. Whatever you have been, have been useless, of no good. Whatever you are transformed, you have of some use. So whatever you have been, you do not be identified with that. But whatever you have to be, you try to be that. And this power you have got, that whatever you want, you will be that. But some people are so funny that if you ask them what they want to be, they'll say that I want to be a donkey. All such silly and foolish people are no good for Sahaja Yoga. Once for all you must come. No use running after such foolish people who have no sense at all and uh, who are so go such gone cases. They'll come back afterwards. But put your attention on positivity and not on negativity. Normally I've seen always negative people turn towards the negative people. If there's one negative person standing, a person who is negative, will immediately go and talk to that person, find out about that person, he'll have sympathy for that person, he'll like that person, all sorts of things will be there. And first sign is that such a person is a complete negatively possessed being. All right. Now if you have done that kind of a thing of being possessed or by getting impressed by these negative people, you are out. Either you are in the sea or out of it. How can you both? You better get out from there and spare the rest. But if you want to be in the sea, then you must know that you have to know swimming and you have to take pride in swimming. Otherwise it has no meaning, it is of no harm. Now you have got curative power, you know that. You can cure people. But do not get into that mess because their Mahamaya plays her part. If you, if I find that you are getting into your head the idea that you are very much, uh, very much uh, getting involved into particular case of your brother-in-laws, father-in-laws, mother-in-law, then I stop it or you get into trouble. If you start making money out of it, I stop it. I do many things by which I just stop it. And then you cannot have that uh, power in you. On the contrary, you suffer quite a lot because you do not know how to protect yourself from all these bad things. So I have to request you that before starting curing others, you first cure yourself fully and also you can use my photographs for curing other people. But you must know that there is a very subtle thing in human beings that they want, that everybody should say, oh, you are great, you have cured so many people. In a very subtle way, on a very subtle way. So one should not bother about all these things. One should keep completely detached about it. 
because for one day or two days or for say about a year people will come to you get this man cured that man cured and then you'll find that you have found nothing they were all bubbles all lost and completely vanished into thin air so do not cure anyone if you have to cure people then you please give them the photograph and ask them to work on them you have got power to handle my photograph and give it to others you have lots of powers which normally common people don't have because i do not tell them many things that i tell you and thus you are a person of a very rare quality and a rare blessing now write it down how many powers you have got go home and you will write a one complete book take it home. may god bless you all try to preserve all your powers respect yourself you are a lamp that is burning a light which enlightens others in their mind it's a very great thing even one person like that was born among millions and billions of people and now here we have so many of you but quality wise if you don't rise it's going to be a hopeless case so you must improve your quality all of you must improve your quality individually not criticizing others not looking at others but individually you should understand your capacities and how much you have given to others and how much you have really manifested out of what you have got you have control over the sun over the moon over the tides and over the sea and all those things you have but for that you have to do a little more which i'll tell you some other time now i don't want you to control all these things and sit down on top of a hillock and start showing off better thing is you work it out first on human beings and then i'll give you all these i'll tell you you already have them awakened but i haven't told you the trick how to do it. so best keep it to myself may god bless you Amen. Yeah.